Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of The Young Farmer. My name is Andy, and as always, you are joining me as I continue my way, my journey um, along my contracting life at the moment. Uh, we are, we're moving our spray browser this morning, so we're going to take it up to another block of fields. We need to shift this, then we need to go and get our sprayer attached. Uh, and then we can get, we've got a little bit of desiccation work to do today on some winter barley, and that will be ready to harvest probably about two weeks' time. Uh, so what we'll be doing is coming in and just spraying off some of the greenery in the bottom of the uh, bottom of the crop really just so it kind of takes out a lot of the moisture there. Uh, so we'll be getting on with that very shortly. And uh, yeah, once we get that done, I'm not really sure we haven't got anything else planned for the rest of the, of the day yet, but uh, we'll always wait and see what comes. Um, but yeah, so we've probably, we haven't got a great deal to run out this morning actually. This is some of the contract spray work we do. Um, and I think we're in the region of around about, um, oh, I think we're going to go up there as well. The region of around about 70 acres to do today, so it shouldn't take that long with the sprayer. Uh, yeah, and then we'll be moving on, so it's uh, nice just to kind of get the job done out of the way really at, at this stage. Um, and then I did have some hay bale to bale, but that's not come through yet. It's uh, The farmer wants to give it another day or two, so uh, we'll find something to do. But for now we just need to pull in the first field we got here. There's actually this one on our left hand side um, and then there's a few more up the hill there as well and this one on our right. So what I might do, it appears we do have a bit of a freestand area over here. So what we'll do is we'll swing the Bowser into here, that'll be nicely out of the way. Give me a bit of space in which I can uh, empty and, and refill the, the sprayer up with as well. Which is pretty perfect. So we'll swing into here. What we're going to do is just get out, we'll open this, uh, these uh, gates up, and we can get ourselves going. So I hope you're all doing very well this morning, hope the week is treating you well. We have got some beautiful weather here right now, and long may that kind of continue. And uh, we should get some much nice, uh, well some really good progress over the next few days. There's been a few storms and a few rough days of weather since we last spoke. Um, and last log, but yeah, we managed to get all that hay bailed up anyway, and then I believe the um, the farmer in question has got that moved. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of still a lot of uh, kind of late silage uh, being mowed and lifted, and also a little bit of uh, a lot of hay being made now as well. But uh, the arable work must continue as well. We've got to get, like I say, the, all these crops desiccated, get these fields done, and then we can look to. Um, I thought yeah, harvest really won't be too far away. Probably looking in the region of about another. Um, oh, I wouldn't know. Uh, another week to ten days, depending upon when the spray was applied. So, yeah, really not too bad at all. We should be able to get going very soon. But like I say, we're going to leave that there for now, because we need to go and grab our um, our trailer. So what we'll do, we'll just we'll swing ourselves back on down to the yard, pick up the uh, sprayer. Everything's ready to go there. We've got all the chemicals we need on the Bowser. Uh, just need to pick the sprayer up and get going. So we'll do exactly that. And then we can hopefully get this knocked out pretty quickly. Uh, we are due, uh, not due any more rain at all today actually, so this should really uh, get absorbed in quite nicely. You shouldn't see it getting washed off or diluted at all in the rain, which is great news. I've managed to get, since we last spoke as well, I've bailed about another 12 acres of big Heston bales, which is great, starting to get a lot more work for that little uh, machine there. Well, that big machine. Which is something I feel like uh, it's... it's it's very pleasing to see that come through because it kind of justifies the decision to buy it, uh, really. Um, elsewhere, our crops are still coming along nicely. It's still about a month off easily from even thinking about cutting, but uh, it's, they're growing nicely. They're, they're coming along leaps and bounds these days, which is great to see. Uh, and hopefully, um, I'm hopeful that that will continue, actually. I'm really interested to see how the soil um, kind of compares to some of the work, the custom work we've been doing. See if we can get a similar uh, similar yield at least. Okay, and there we go. So what we'll do at this stage, we're just going to trundle on back, um, and then we will pick up the new or pick up the sprayer from the yard there and we can get ourselves going so we'll catch you when we're back at the yard and we're hitching everything up okay folks we are good to go we've got everything fueled up, greased up, hooked up and we're ready to fly off here 
sheds have all been locked up again and I had to move the Land Rover out here because I can't actually get the big new baler under that shed annoyingly so it's got to stay inside. Uh, we're actually nearly running out of space would you believe? Uh, things are starting to get a little bit tight around here but never mind we're not going to do anything about that we can't afford to do anything about that so we'll have to just leave it be and uh, yeah, we'll see what we can get ourselves up to. But yeah, we're going to head out with the Bertrude sprayer on here and we're going to go and, like I say, get that desiccation done nice and quickly this morning there. And it should give us a little bit more time. I'd actually like to, if I can manage to get around to it, uh, go and pick up a bale spike this afternoon. Uh, one for the back of the back in front of the tractor, really. So we might go and do that. Certainly on the list of things to do. Got a, a local fabricator to rustle something up for me, so we might have to go and have a look at that one. Um, but yeah, we'll we'll cross that bridge once we get this spray done today. Actually, I think. Okay, and away we go. So we'll just take a nice, gentle uh, stroll back up to where we came from here, and we'll see what trouble we can get ourselves into. Uh, elsewhere, there seems to be at the moment a roaring trade for um, for forage and, f and fodder. Really, at the moment, there's a lot of drought in certain parts of the UK that's really been hammering uh, first cut forage. So uh, a lot of people are making everything they can at the moment, which is great for me because it means I can I can assist and I can do what I can. Um, but it's bad for some guys because they have literally nothing. So. Uh, They've come off of their kind of first cut silage, where they usually get kind of 70-75% of their winter feed with about 45-50. So they're really struggling there, so uh, I could be, I'm looking at possibly donating my time uh, and my tractor to cart some silage around, well, silage bales at least. Um, so we'll have to see how that looks and hopefully we can manage to do that, but I'm, I'm not sure at the minute. Um, I'll certainly be carting something, whether it's silage bales or hay bales, I'll certainly be carting something around just to kind of help out where I can. But yeah, we'll need to wait and see what happens with that one. I'm waiting for a few phone calls back to see when it's going to be necessary. Um, but we'll see from there, really. And it'll be something I'd like to do. It'll be a nice help for me, really. Um, very nice to be able to help out and donate my time where I can, really. Okay, so it's not too far of a trip to take. We're just going to scoot around the corner here. It's a bit of a blind corner. I don't like having to swing wide on this corner when, you, uh, when you've when you got something big on the back. That's a bit tight. That being said, we're going to rumble on down. We'll get this set up there and then we will get this going. Typically when we desiccate here we use a glyphosate mix which will kill off any of the kind of any of the green grasses or the green weeds in the lower in the bottom of the, uh, the crop really. Uh, typically what they will do is they'll hold their moisture a lot more so when you do come to combine the crop the straw's a little bit damp and wet because it's just got nowhere to the moisture just can't disappear. So by killing uh, by using glyphosate you kill off anything with the green with the green leaf because it reacts with the chloroform inside of the leaf um, I believe at least so it's that's why we're going to be spraying that today and that means that if we give it 10 days to work through there it'll kill off any of the green um, green grass in the bottom of the plant bottom of the crop here and then it should be good to dry off and good to uh, good to harvest that's the aim at least uh, now there are several EU intentions to ban uh, glyphosate, which I think is a bit ridiculous. Uh, so hopefully that doesn't come to pass. Uh, but for now we're just going to jump into this field here. And we'll get ourselves uh, get ourselves filled up. Okay, just like that, it doesn't take too long. There's a nice little uh, petrol-driven pump on this Bowser. So this works, fills up the sprayer in no time at all. And yeah, we can get on with it. So we're going to jump back into our little tractor here. And then all we need to do, we'll probably... Get this unfolded and then, yeah, it won't take us too long to do this field at all. We will raise our boom height up a little bit though. The crop's fully growing now, so and we need to just keep it a little higher. But 
it's perfect. A bit further out there. Customer opted not to put tram lines in here for some reason. I'm not sure what he was thinking, but uh, there you go. Trying something different, I believe. So we are. Fortunately, we have our GPS, so it's not really too much of an issue for ourselves. It's looking like a good crop of barley here, though. It's looking mightily thick. Uh, really good looking solid crop here. Nice and tall, a lot of straw in it, a lot of heads. Uh, heads don't been, haven't been bent over or battered down by the wind, so or the rain. It's not on the floor at all in any way, so it's looking like a very strong, decent crop here. Uh, which is fantastic news for the farmer. Uh, we are going to continue, we'll get this field knocked out in, like I say, in no time at all. And then we'll work ourselves across into some of the other fields there. And uh, we'll see how they're looking as well. So join us in a little bit and we'll see how we're getting on. All right, then, folks, welcome back. We are in a lovely field to spread, uh, to spray here. Look at the views we get over this field. Really nice rolling hills throughout, so it's beautiful. And we are cracking on here. This is the last field we've got to do now, actually. So uh, we shouldn't be on for too much longer. The headland's already been done. We've just got uh, this side of the, okay, this half of the uh, of the rows to do, of the uh, ends to do as well, because we, uh, we we ran out of spray, to be honest. We had to go and uh, top up a little bit extra. Uh, but yeah, it's beautiful area to work in. Really something. Really, really nice. Now this one we have to be a little bit more careful of because we've got a great big traffic uh, telegraph pole smack bang in the middle. So we'll have to take our time with that one and kind of veer out wide as well. Uh, but what we'll do, we'll just keep running ourselves down here and then we'll stop, we'll come back and then we'll swing around it. I think it's going to be the best plan. Because, yeah, that could be a nasty expense for all parties if anything was to happen there. We'll just fold in that boom and then we fold it straight back out again. Make sure we we'll pull ourselves right forward to us and clip and then we can go back. And perfect. And we're back on. Just like that. And there's a couple more in here, I think. Yes. Actually, that far one might be in the other field there, but we've still got one more to crack on with, so we might have to get into there very shortly. But yeah, we'll just continue. Get this all wrapped out nice and quickly there, and then we're pretty much done with the spraying. So we'll take this back to the yard. Uh, at the moment, the phone has not rung, so there's no more jobs to come in, so we might just get a few little odd jobs done around the yard um, and see how that all goes. I like this field. This field's a great one to uh, to work in. Keeps everything a little bit fresh when you have different views to look at every day. It's one of the gems of being a contractor, I suppose. Okay, and I think this will be the last pass. According to the GPS, we've already done the one over there to our left, so uh, we can be good. We can even see the telephone mast right on the hillside there. It's fantastic. So we'll get ourselves up to the top here, then we'll probably have to just scoot around the edge to avoid trampling down any more crop. But then that'll be us done, so we will take us back to the yard. We'll have to find, we'll have to probably come back and collect the water bowser at some point, but we can do that. And then uh, that is us done. Another job safely ticked off the list, and uh, I'm going to speak to my um, the manu or the fabricator, the welder, see if he's finished with my uh, bale spikes. And if he has, I'll go and pick those up. That means I've just got something else that we can kind of move a few bales around with. I haven't decided yet if I'm going to make my straw into round or square bale straw, but um, I have no loader at the minute, so obviously I need to move those around a little bit. Uh, so we could do that. And then, yeah, we'll wait and see from there. But more importantly, yeah, we just want to make sure we have that because then again, it's a different, uh, another job that we can do uh, for someone at some stage. Well, I hope you're all doing very well anyway. Um, do let us know down below what you have been getting up to, uh, what your, where you're working at the moment as well. If you are watching this and you're working in the region, do let me know what you're getting up to. Uh, always very intrigued about that. 
Uh, and I know that Simulation Forward Nation will try and read everything as often as you can and comment and respond, so do drop comments down below and you'll get back to you. Uh, and I'll try and get back to them as well. Whenever I have an opportune moment to, I'll try and jump on board. Uh, we'll just fold this back up there. Nice and quick on the hydraulic folding as well, which is always very impressive. Alright then, that is done. So we will, like I say, we'll just take our time. We're going to just pull off the crop here. They kind of squared this field off a little bit when they drilled it. With the, They must have had a monstrous drill in here because they squared all the corners off uh, just to, and left the rest of it as set aside. So uh, it kind of just makes it a little bit easier to plant, I guess. And all these areas will become wildlife areas at some point, I have no doubt. So uh, that kind of, I guess that worked out quite well for them in the end. And we'll trundle our way back on down to the yard and we'll see what other mischief we can get ourselves up to. Uh, so yeah, I will... I'm probably going to leave the um, water tanker there for now, but we'll take this back to the yard and then we'll catch you over there and see if we can go and pick up these bell spikes. Okay then folks, we have taken everything off the back now, we've got ourselves back over to the yard. Uh, we're going for another road trip to go and pick up the, uh, pick up the new bell spikes really. And that's spoke with the with the farmer who's been making these for me he's like a farmer but a part-time fabricator as well and does a lot of work in with uh, with welding um, and so for this project for, for him it was very easy okay child's play really for him to fix this up and put this together but he's got them done anyway which is fantastic news we're gonna go and pick them up and this is actually the same guy who I did some of the baling for uh, with the new Heston baler and he mentioned some of those bales are still out there, so if I wanted to give these a go, I can kind of just have a little play around with the bale spikes and see what we think. So we're going to do exactly that. Uh, we'll trundle on over, we'll pick these up, uh, and then yeah, we'll just see how it all looks and how it all comes together, really. So it could be quite interesting. Uh, but yeah, again, it's just something that we can mainly use for myself. Uh, I don't have a front loader, as I mentioned, i got these bales that I need to take care of somehow, so it made sense that we, we do this. Um, and so yeah, as I said, it's a very cheap project, a couple of, a, a, a bail spike for the front, linkage arm for the back. Very simple, just using box metal, uh, and then the, the most expensive part was me actually buying the, um, the individual bail spikes really, so, uh, and the rest of it, we'll see how it all looks, but oh, we're nipping there. I'm excited to pick them up anyway, and again, it adds something else to my fleet, I can go and cart bales for someone if the need is there. So we'll see how we get on. Uh, but yeah, we'll go pick these up, have a quick play around with them, see how they look, and then that'll be us good for the day, I think. Around this corner. It's much easier to come along this road when you haven't got a lumbering big Heston bale on behind you, that's for sure. Excellent, and away we go. I was actually, the other day I went down to pick up the bale spikes for this uh, project uh, from the local dealers and they had a class action 840 sitting there in the yard. That was uh, tempting, to say the very least. Oh yeah, still got some bales out there we can have a lift up. So he has quite a few sheep up here somewhere, I'm led to believe. That's where it is mainly focused on sheep at least. Uh, so I get to see them, but he must have quite a few up and around here somewhere. You can really hear the coast though from here. Really hear those waves. So I'm not sure where exactly these are up here, but we'll go and find out. We'll get them hooked on, and then we'll, um, yeah, we'll get, we'll see a little bit more about them. Okay, so in here somewhere, that looks like they could be them. Let's have a look, see. Oh, perfect! Look at those things. Look lovely. I love the grey paintwork. And they should be plenty strong enough to lift up a Heston bale as well. I'm sure of it. That's fantastic. So quite how easy it's going to be to hook one of these onto the front linkage when we can't really see it. That remains to be seen, but we'll give it a go. How's that looking? Oh, right fist. 
time we can get that to work. Perfect. Just spin ourselves around, we'll get that one picked up. I could might want to extend the front because we can't really see, we can just see those two the top two bits of box metal, we can't really see the spikes at all. And the other thing to think about as well, I probably shouldn't be driving around the road with uh, six spikes. Six or four. Six spikes on the front of my tractor that I can't see. So we'll have to be very careful about how we transport these in the future, but uh, for getting them home we'll take it slow and steady. And we should be okay. Uh, but yeah, we're gonna have a bit of a play. Oh, he's got a nice old Massey there. We will go and have a little bit of a lift around in the field. We'll just kind of line these bells up or something. Uh, see how it goes. Yeah. Looking very good, looking very solid actually, but very well made. That's fantastic news. One of the first jobs I ever did when I was young for my parents was uh, driving an old International three, uh, 434 with a bale spike on the back. And we had round bales though, but we were stacking them all up and I was rowing them all up into a, um, a trailer load size. I think we put like 12 bales on a trailer or something, so uh, I had to line them up in two sets of six. That's one of the first things I remember doing. Okay, so let's see how well this starts. Just gonna drive straight into it. There we go. And just like that, we have bales. Lovely stuff. There's a bit of weight on here, you can definitely feel it on the tractor there, but it's, we're we're surviving. Not too much, and what I think we'll do, we'll just stack them up here. That's one off that. Of course, you can't really see what the front one's doing, but you just gotta kind of trust that it's going well. We'll give it like a go with two more and then I'm very happy I think we can get out of here. Uh, let's just go and stab that one. It's nice to just kind of charge with a bale and stab it square on. It works out quite well. There's one. I'll get that one there as well. These bales are dense though. We've got the baler tuned in properly for these. Let's just have a look see how this is handling. Well, it's holding them. Could have got that one a little, on a little bit further, but it's not doing too bad a job at all. And that back one is on fairly solidly as well. So they're doing the job. That's all you can ask for, uh, really. But yeah, we are going to stack these ones up. Uh, we might even just do them a favour and line some more of these up, actually, just to make them easier to bring in. Uh, but we will leave it here for now. So thank you ever so much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed. Uh, we're kind of doing a few little ramshackle jobs here and there, but we're getting everything done. And we're getting very close to harvest now, which is fantastic news. Hopefully we'll keep ourselves busy through there. But until next time, mate. Until next time, thank you ever so much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed. If you have, don't forget to hit that like button. And if you have yet to, subscribe to Simulation for the Nation. Uh, who kindly post my videos and we shall see you in the next one so until then do stay safe enjoy what you're doing as always but most importantly happy farming